What's going on my boys, YT Dan, back at it again with another video. And we're gonna be getting in there to talk about the new box. I forgot what it was called. I quickly looked to see what it was actually called and it's called Shark Fang. I see how I forgot. Crush that like button and subscribe and watch my live streams Monday through Friday, every weekday at 8 p.m. to whenever. And you know what? It's a good, it's a good price, it's free. So just hit the like button, subscribe, and come check it out. So the first thing I wanna do talking about this box is talk about not every card, but the cards that I think are most important or more meta game changing. And in my opinion, one of the biggest cards that this box is built around is Fissure. And a lot of people aren't really seeing it. I saw someone leave a comment that I thought was very uh, telling to the general uh, consensus of what people think about Fissure. And basically the guy was saying, hey, I thought I was the only one who thought Fissure was a good card. And because I'm, I guess the, the role guy who tells you Fissure is a good card and everyone else is telling you Fissure is ass, um, I guess I gotta explain myself a little bit and tell you why Fissure is a good card. And Fissure is a card that I think is gonna see prominent play. So the first thing I wanna point out is that Fissure cannot kill Cockatus. It can't stop Cockatus at all. It cannot stop the Invoker. Pretty much Cockatus uh, wrecks Fissure. Um, and we know this, right? Like, why is that any type of uh, surprise? Why do people think that um, Cockatus is gonna be the end all be all for the meta? And I really don't think so. I mean, Cockatus is a strong card in and of itself. As you can see here, it says it cannot be targeted. Um, it cannot be destroyed by card effects. The only way to really beat this thing is to buy, beat it by battle. But the funny thing is, you know, when you look at the tier list, the top deck is Shiranui and Kamakiri. And if it's uh, those two decks, um, the Invoker is not um, anywhere in that. Um, and then there are some Invoke decks, some random Invoke decks here and there that pop up. But Cockatus is not our problem while we think about Fisher. The reason why Fisher is a good card is because Xyz and other strategies become more prominent. We're gonna get more powerful Xyz monsters like this. Um, and this card is called Male Stroke the Symphony Jin. Uh, so this card pretty much is broken. Um, it says once per turn you can detach and exceed material, then target a face up attack position monster your opponent controls, change it to face down defense position, and if a Jin monster you control will be destroyed, uh, you can detach a material and keep uh, the monster alive. This card, you might think you know, why Why was this relevant? You know, it's a basically as uh, Brad would say, it's a Kanadia on legs, but you gotta think about this Kanadia on legs. This Kanadia on legs has 1800 attack. If someone dropped a cockatiss on you and dropped a male stroke, you can play Fisher and then you get to choose. Um, you can destroy male stroke and then continue your combo so that you can run over the cockatiss. Um, Summoning a bunch of powerful monsters, putting a bunch of board negates up, and then dropping Male Stroke the Symphony is gonna be disgusting. And the name kind of stands out for itself. It's a symphony. It's gonna be a beautiful play. Outside of this example that I'm talking about, about Male Stroke, there's many other situations, and this is just one situation that I know will pop up. Male Stroke is really good, and this card being on the field and using a card like Fisher to destroy him is exactly what you're gonna need. Now, also, like a card like Male Stroke has the second effect. It's if a Jin Xyz monster would be destroyed, you can detach an Xyz material um, from that card uh, instead. So if someone summons out Jin, and I would imagine if they played Jin on you, um, if they didn't have a board where they were basically. Hey, looks like the baby had his way. <laughs> and now <laughs> I had to cut the stream. I mean, not the stream, cut the video and start over. Baby said, how dare you? <laughs> so we're just going to talk it out, my boys. And uh, yeah, it's going to be all good. So as I was saying, Mail Stroke is a really good card. And sitting it up behind something like Cockatus is a deadly combo. But if you really think about it, a card like Fissure can at least get rid of the Mail Stroke 
and allow you to continue your plays. Now, if you bring out male stroke, male stroke is going to have two exceeds uh, materials on him. And then he'll use one material probably on the turn he's summoned to put something face down so that you guys are or whoever summoned male stroke can, you know, reclaim the game, gain advantage or whatever the case may be. And then you'll have an opportunity to follow up with a card like Fissure to remove the counter from it. So it either no longer has the ability to negate or it's destroyed. So Fissure is going to be a really good card. I like to bring up Maelstroke because Maelstroke is going to be a really good mainstream card. And this is basically knocking out two birds with one stone, talking about the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Uh, like and subscribe. All right. I want to talk more about these Exceeds cards because I felt like what we were really lacking was value in the Exceeds monsters, being able to remove cards, banish cards. We know we need to be able to use two resources to summon a monster and then also have the value of being able to remove monsters from the field. You know, we need more powerful cards uh, for exceeds, like something like uh, uh, Michael the Arc Light Sworn. You know, we need monsters like this, but we need the generics not locked behind archetypes. And this card, uh, the Keeper of Armageddon, is definitely one of those cards, but it's a little situational and it is a rank five. So eh, who, like, who's gonna use this really? Probably Cyber Dragon, like, so I don't really know, but let's take a look at the effect. Once per turn, you can detach one exceeds material from this card and target one face up monster opponent controls and destroy it. Now, you couldn't use wind up uh, shark for this because I believe you can only make wind ups with wind ups. So at this point, it's like, what would you have to choose for this card? Pretty much, I think Cyber Dragon is the only choice, but I think that this is one of those better exceeds monsters. Just one spot removal is great. And you can already see the power creep because we had a monster that was locked behind an archetype that could get rid of a card. And that was a UR. Um, and I'm talking about the uh, Starteller card. Um, but then following up in the next main box, we have a rank five monster that can go ahead and just kill any face up monster and it only costs two exceeds. So we're getting there. And then along with the uh, Jin card that allows you to put face down, you know, that we're getting some really powerful exceeds monsters right now. So I'm excited about that. Another card, like I was talking about while we're in the exceeds vein, Evil Sword Bahamut, he's pretty busted. So basically two uh, level four is swarm monsters and i'm guessing that's going to be cards that are in this set because i don't believe we have that yet but once per turn you can detach one exceeds material from this card target a face-up monster your opponent controls discard one card and if you do you can take control of the opponent's monster so basically you're gonna need three cards so to execute this i don't know how viable is this gonna be i don't know but stealing an opponent's monster is broken in dual links period we don't we have not had any cards to really legitimately easily steal a monster or be able to build a deck where we are just stealing monsters i think the only thing that could really do that was aliens at the time and um aliens didn't do it all that well so I'll be interested to see how these Evil Swarm decks come out because I'm pretty sure people are going to build decks just around this Evil Swarm Bahamut just to take control of monsters because, you know, I am. Here's another interesting card. I, I really do like this card, Evil Swarm Thanatos. So, so this is basically, he's Thanos. I'm just going to call him Evil Swarm Thanos from here on out. And basically, you can use two dark materials, two level four dark monsters to exceed summon him. And once per turn, he can detach and exceed the material and this face up card is unaffected by other card effects. Now that's interesting. I do kind of like that. He's at 2350 and he's an ex uh, exceeds monster. So he can't get anything like uh, uh, anything like, well, he couldn't get a beat down anyway, but um, he can definitely use ties that tilt. So, I mean, with ties, he's 24, uh, 50 uh, by himself. And if you have two other monsters, he could be 2650 unaffected by everything. Um, interesting card. I think it's definitely something that, um, we might see some play on and it's a rare, so it's definitely pretty good. All right. So here we are with number 45, pretty much. This is a rank two monster with 2200 attack, which I'm not really sure. I haven't really played with rank twos or level twos recently to know if level two monsters have legitimate big or small attacks or if that's like relevant, but I think 2200 for level two is pretty good, but this card can 
negate a monster's effect and then all monsters with that same name can't activate uh their effects and that's pretty good um you know so i mean i would say that's pretty decent but if you're running some kind of level two deck maybe you're running shining angel or something and you can get this guy out um i guess why not All right, so a lot of people keep asking, do you think that Mermils are gonna make a comeback? And honestly, I don't know. But we do have Xyz monsters with Mermils and they're level three, so that's interesting. So we have um, an Xyz monster that requires three uh, level three monsters to Xyz summon it. And um, it clearly must have an amazing effect because of this uh, ridiculous wall of text. So let's start reading it, my boys. All right, so honestly, when I look at this card, I don't think it's worth it. With an effect to just redirect attacks and targets um, in terms of being able to do it three times, I just don't think that this is just um, a, wor a worthwhile spend, which are Mermail deck. Basically, you're gonna end up putting in a lot more work trying to get this card to work than anything else. All right, so basically this card isn't all that great. I mean, with the cost of three monsters, I think that you could have probably done a lot better. Also, the, the targets, the effects only redirect targets. They don't negate and destroy. So because it doesn't negate and destroy, I do not think this card is going to be worth its, its weight. Um, I think it's actually going to be uh, pretty trash. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to see a ton of play. Unless, of course, you know, I'm misjudging because, you know, obviously I haven't taken the time to uh, fully go through and look at all the level three mermail monsters that you could potentially use to make this thing and think of a broken combo. But honestly, I just don't think it's going to be worth it to summon a card like this um, in the end. So if you want my opinion here on this particular card, I just don't think it's going to be worth your while in the end um, as there is not enough cards to justify, you know, such a weak effect. That's why it's a rare anyway. Okay, this card is absolutely busted and it's my favorite card in the rare category and my favorite card in level three um, exceeds summoning so far. I know you guys have seen some of my previous videos where I've been using exceed summoning and rank and level threes and this card works very perfectly with those decks, honestly. So this is a rank three monster that only requires two earth monsters to create. And then basically once per turn, you can detach um, an Xyz material to target one spell or trap your opponent controls and lock it down. Basically, this is Sergeant Electro. <laughs> and it's funny. Um, yeah, this is Sergeant Electro, my boy. Um, get, get ready because there's some good Sergeant Electro action coming up for y'all next week my boy got another meme video coming really soon but i like this card this is pretty good 1800 22 body um pretty decent to either get a combo going or if you've already special summoned a couple times you can just go ahead and drop this guy uh very very easily so so i'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing something like this this is actually a really good uh card to uh think about using and then also you know psychic wielder is pretty awesome as well and it's going to be one of those mainstay cards that are always going to be around to either should i go into psychic wielder use should i use my psychic wielder and my lance to go into a synchro summon or should i drop soul of the silver mountain should i summon my bark e lion <laughs> what should i do like this i just like having this additional option so i think it's pretty good all right so we got another one number 28 titanic titanic moth and basically you can cut his attack in half, I think, and attack directly. Yes, and in addition to that direct attack, you can detach a material and do 250 points of damage. And as you can hear, it's laughable. So I think, honestly, um, I don't think that this card is gonna get any type of play. Um, it's decent, but I mean, two level sevens, what is that, two dark magicians? Nobody's gonna do that, unless someone has 250 life points and then they'll exceed and this is basically cowboy for game. It's like Titanic for game like yeah fuck <laughs> Now here's another you are um, it's a hope woven dragon spider shark, which is number 37 It's a rank for two water monsters to create so I'm pretty sure it does something pretty busted because it's you are 
Wow, so this card's actually pretty good. This is a decent, yeah, this is a really decent card to just kind of play by itself, just at the cost of two monsters. Um, this card can cut all monsters' attacks on the field. This card is pretty decent when it comes to summoning two monsters. I mean, the cost on this card is great because most people, you know, battle traps are not very prominent in dual links, but people do use battle traps. Um, you will get caught by a rogue wall of D every now and again. And because that's a thing, you know, having a card like this, Hope Woven, Dragon Spider, um, Spider Shark, I'm sorry. Um, this card actually will help out because you have that reducing of a thousand points when anyone attacks. So if that happens, you know, the monsters need to be over 3,600 to even swing on this thing. Um, or to even tie with this thing. Um, then on top of that, if it actually dies, you can special summon a monster from the graveyard for free. That is broken, man. So I actually like this card a lot. I think it should really, really help out um, a ton of decks and I'm gonna be definitely using this. Now we kind of already know about Shark Drake number 32. This card's pretty good because it can just, um, pretty much it's a game ending card. You summon this card, you attack your opponent's monster, um, it kills it. You'll bring your opponent's monster back from the grave with reduced attack so that you can finish it off and hopefully your opponent. So Shark Drake's great in dual links. There's not really much to be said there, but it's nice that it's gonna actually be in a box. Now I'm just gonna highlight a few more cards here. I'm not gonna go over. So I'm just gonna highlight a few more cards here. Um, um, more cards that I like. I went over most of the exceeds um, that I thought were pretty relevant, but I do wanna go over some of these other cards that I think are really good. 10 Goldfish is pretty much a water machine Goblinberg. And what's interesting about 10 Goldfish is that it doesn't change itself to defense position like Goblinberg, but it has 2000 defense unlike Goblinberg. Also boys, one thing before I go, I was gonna just end it off, but I forgot to mention one card that is really good. Xyz Reborn. This card can target one monster in the graveyard, special summon it, and attach the trap card as an Xyz material. This is a really good card, especially for something like Stellar Knights. Um, you know, after they lose their boss monster and they get their special summon, they can actually use it to special summon, you know, something else to get the combo going, um, create a new combo and pop Xyz Reborn to bring back their boss Stellar Knight and destroy a card. This is actually gonna be a really good trap card and I expect to see play of this card for sure. All right, my boys, not to say that the rest of the box isn't worth it. There's tons of great cards in here like go 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 giant and other cards but right now i just want to quickly go over just a few cards and the things that i really like the things that pointed out to me that i really thought was cool and interesting you know outside of cards like amoeba i, I obviously interesting rando cards that they're adding into the game but i definitely wanted to just kind of point out these cards and talk to you guys about you know what I've seen here and what I actually like. I'll be going over it more in depth when the actual box drops and we'll be going through each and every card as we pull them directly. But make sure you like and subscribe so you can get that content. And also be sure to, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what type of stuff you're looking for and let me know the type of cards that you're enjoying playing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. All right, thanks my boy so much for watching. And as always, keep it dank.